What I'd like to do today is show you how I made my 9mm shot shells. So it's basically a mini shotgun shell. Um, doesn't have a one solid projectile. It's got a lot of little pellets in it. I think number, uh, probably number 8 and some number 9. So if you look at a 9mm, empty 9mm, you can see this is a little bit longer. So if you just took this, this case and you crimped it, it would be too, too short. Actually, probably be okay for 380. But for, uh, for 9mm, you have to have a little extra space. If you look at the 9mm bullet, you can see it's just a little bit longer, but it has that curve to it so that it can actually get into the feed ramp. So what I came up with, started with a uh, 223 spent rifle casing, cut the rifle casing down to maybe 0.85 inches, run it through the dies that I'll show you that I made, puts a nice round angle on there, and then put the primer in, put the powder, then um, put the wax on top, then I'll show you how I feed it in. So what I came up with was uh, basically a die set. This is a three-quarter inch extension that I chucked into the lathe. If you don't have a lathe, you can use a drill press. And uh, unfortunately with these things, whenever you're doing a first of a kind, you typically don't video because you're not sure if it's going to work or not, so you have to video after. So I basically drill, drill this out. The um, casing sits down inside. You put the, the upper part of the die, set it down, hit it with a hammer, and it makes it round. So this isn't hardened. What I did, I took the temper out of it before I actually started machining it. So you basically take one piece, you cut it in half, drill your holes. This is flat. This is a, uh, a modified drill bit. And uh, we'll show you how I did some of that. So we'll start with just the logistics. Again, we have a 223. We have an empty or spent 9mm and we have a regular 9mm. What I did, 223 9mm 9, put the base dimensions, put the, the mid dimensions. You can see 0 .374, 0 .373. So 223 will um, fit in a 9mm or a 380. 0 .369, 0 .372. Again, those are close enough. Once we cut this and you shoot it the first time, it'll, it'll neck, neck up. You see the overall length of the casing is 0.745 but this has to be a little bit bigger. So the overall length of a 9mm is 103.8 uh, it doesn't really matter with a 223. Alright, second part of this again, 223 9mm. I'm going to cut this at point, point, uh, 0 0.81, 0 0.9, 0 0.1. It doesn't really matter what you cut it at. I chuck this in a, put this in a, a, a vise, cut it with a hacksaw. It will be a pretty rough piece. Again, it's going to be uh, it's going to be shorter than what the nine millimeter is. And again, if you look at the differences between these two, these two, you can see that there's is definitely a length difference. So 0 0.08, 1.9, 1, 1, 1 inch, something like that. Go ahead and cut it off. Let me show you that in the video. And once you get the piece cut off, this is the bottom part of the die. This is the top part of the die. What you're trying to get here is these edges rounded so that the 9mm shell will actually rack in to the um, to the barrel. You can actually see a little bit of roundness to it. So the cutoff 223 is loaded in. The top part is put on uh, maybe an eighth of an inch gap. And then again it's tapped with the hammer. As soon as you tap it you'll get that round edge on it. So if you look at a normal drill bit, you see the angle here, is it 60 degrees or something. So this is what you're going to use to, to cut the bottom. That's going to give you a nice seat. Whenever you want to do the the, the upper portion, you actually have to take a, a drill bit, pretty much a, the same thing, 0.375 drill bit. You're going to have to grind off the edges Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. All it has to do is give some angle so that the um, something enough to deform the brass into a round shape. All right, so here we're going to make our last cut in. I'm not going to make a cut, but you can see the tip. The 
it's a lot more run. That's going to be the same, uh, pretty much the same roundness as what the 9mm bullet's going to be. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but what we want to do is put an angle in here so that the um, when the 223 shell is compressed, it's actually going to put a little kerf in there. What we'll do is zoom in. You can see there's really not much to that. Maybe uh, three eighths of an inch thick, but you can see the the angle to it. All right, this piece is the um, the actual lower part of the die. You can actually see a depth in there. I'll I'll put some uh, dimensions on a sheet of paper that you can see. But the 9mm would drop down inside of that. So this would be the lower portion, or the base. You would put the, uh, the, the cutoff 223. And this one's pretty much flush down here. So it doesn't have any of the rondus. So basically the, the 223 shell drops down inside here. You put the top on it, hit it with a hammer, and you get the nice, uh, the nice angle. All right, so they're pretty close now. Again, uh, you don't need to use a caliper on this. You can if you want to, but I don't think it matters. They're close enough in length. Hopefully the new shell's a little bit bigger. Go ahead and we'll uh, wire brush these ragged edges off of here. You can clean the inside if you want. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put it onto the dies. Again, now we have the, the die set. So the 9mm, the Texel 223 will go inside the lower die. Upper die will be put on top of it and then we'll just lightly tap this with a hammer. What I didn't do after I heated these up was uh, go ahead and heat treat them. If I was doing mass productions of uh, you know a couple hundred of these I probably would but I think it's good enough the way it is. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop the, the 223 in. The upper die sits on top of it. And there's about that much room in there, I don't know, quarter inch eighth of an inch. And then I'll just start tapping it with a hammer and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, then the last part of it, once you're done, we'll go ahead and we'll put a new primer in. Which the primer's in. We'll put, uh, these don't cycle out. These don't eject. So I have to put probably a faster burning powder in like a, a, a 700X high score. For right now, Unique is what I practice with, what I'm trying to experiment with. So we'll go ahead and we'll load four grains of Unique in. Well, we're going to need to put a cardboard disc in here to separate the powder from the shot. And uh, we'll go ahead and put the shot in here. And then on top I put wax. Wax just basically holds everything together so that the BBs don't fall out. Alright, so what I'll do now is put about four grains of Unique in. This is a dipper. It's a 9mm shell. You can see the powder in it. When you're dealing with powder, you always want to wear gloves if you're going to touch it. I try not to touch this. Can't see the powder inside of here. Next is a cardboard disc that's about the size of the 9mm. Go ahead and bend this to slide it in. And we'll straighten it out. So we have a couple different types of shot here. The little stuff I think is a number 8. You can see the difference in the um, Get the camera up to it. So probably number six, number eight. Again, it doesn't really matter. It's as much as you can fit in. So you can't really see there's the cardboard disc, but there's cardboard disc. There's probably much, maybe a, a third of the way down with powder. From here, I'm going to start dropping the lead shot in. All right, here you can see the lead shot. is in. I'm going to go ahead and maybe put another one, number six, in there just to get that evened out. Don't know how many grains all that is. Don't really care. Um, we'll get, put one in and I'll start putting the wax on it. Alright, so here we are at the final product. 
that says 223 on the back, but you know that's a, so you can see that's a 223 shell. Cut down, neck, run through the dies. We have the wax in there. First layer is the four grains of unique. If you have a different powder, you leave it in the notes if you want to try something a little different, a little faster burning powder. With the 45s, I think I use four grains of high score 700X, and that's enough to um, fire and cycle the weapon so that the next round can be loaded in. We have a cardboard disc and then as much lead shot as I can put in there. So the crimp is in. This is self loading. Again, this is, uh, will be the number one round that I'll keep in my magazine. If any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching.